Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Super Hybrid. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a nondescript jet black car moving along an alley near a crowded bar. It's nighttime now, so there are many people drinking outside. Two young men walk out of the bar, discussing a girl. They don't notice the car slowly inching alongside them. But when they turn around, the black car is gone. In its place is a shiny red sports car. One of the men is immediately intrigued by the expensive vehicle. The door is unlocked, and he gets in. The other man is more hesitant, suggesting that it's probably a police trap. But the first man mocks him for being cowardly, so the second man gets inside the car. The moment he is seated, the door, the ignition, the wheel, and the windows all disappear. It's now pitch black inside the car. The two men start to panic. Screams erupt as the vehicle consumes them. One of the men slaps their bloody hand on the wall, but it's too late. They don't know that the car they were planning to steal is not like other cars, it is a monster. The car reverts to its original black color and speeds through the streets of the city. It flies by an intersection where another car crashes into it. The second car flips in the air while the black car rolls down the road. Police immediately respond. They approach the black car, but when they open the door, they discover that there is no one inside the vehicle, but a strange dark liquid is using out of the car trunk. With no one reclaim the vehicle, the car is taken to the police garage. Across town, a female mechanic named Tilda gets ready for work. Her boyfriend leaves with her, but he doesn't really do anything except bum around because he doesn't have a job. She subtly nudges him to do more things around the house if he doesn't want a job, but he keeps complaining about his injured back, hindering him from doing anything. Plus, he keeps nagging his girlfriend about fixing his car so he can look good during job interviews. Meanwhile, the bearded mechanic on duty is astounded when he sees that the black car is now mysteriously repaired. All the broken windows and bent metal from the crash are gone. He gets inside the car to check if the engine is working, but the car slams the door on his leg. The bearded mechanic hops out of the vehicle, and the car rams him into the elevator shaft. The strict garage owner, called the boss, watches his crew via security cameras in his office. He notices that the bearded mechanic has disappeared without finishing his tasks for today. He calls the rest of the crew through the intercom and asks them where the bearded mechanic is. Working on that night shift is a deaf mechanic with a hearing aid, Tilda's teenage nephew, and a veteran mechanic. The boss asks the veteran mechanic to look for their missing employee. The deaf mechanic asks the nephew if Tilda will come to work. Speaking of, Tilda arrives at work late on her motorcycle. The uptight boss reprimands her because he caught her nephew studying while working. He leaves to continue looking for the bearded mechanic. Meanwhile, Tilda asks her boss secretary if she has seen the locket that she left behind the other day. The secretary replies that she hasn't seen it. The veteran sees the black car and he gets closer to it. He's surprised by the nephew, who is also looking for the bearded mechanic. Tilda asks her boss if she can work on her boyfriend's car during her break, but he snidely tells her that they have tons of cars in need of repair today, and she won't have the time to please her loser boyfriend. Tilda gets to work. She inspects the jet black car and remarks that the car was made differently. It feels different when she touches it. The hood feels warm as well, despite not being moved since it was taken to the garage. Tilda presses her ears to the hood and hears strange hissing noises that are unlike any engine she has ever heard. Curious, she orders to get the car on a lift so they can inspect its undercarriage. Deaf mechanic and the nephew ride the elevator back to the top level, while Tilda stays behind to look for the missing mechanic. The veteran finds a rare vintage car. Tilda sees him and notices that the jet black car is no longer parked in the same spot. Instead, it was replaced by the vintage car that caught the veteran's attention. He opens the car door to check the vehicle out. Suddenly, the door slams Tilda against the car strongly. An appendage reaches out, clamps itself around the veteran, and traps him inside the car. Tilda tries to help him. She uses a nearby fire extinguisher to break the glass, but no matter how hard she slams the window, nothing happens. The car suddenly reverses and runs over Tilda as the veteran screams. Tilda hurriedly tells her boss and the others about what happened. She can barely wrap her head around the idea that a super hybrid monster car is going around in people. As expected, they think she's making all of it up. Deaf mechanic even reasons that Tilda had experienced trauma when she was in college and she became very paranoid. They hear the rumbling of the jet black car somewhere in the garage. The boss storms at the vehicle, but finds that it has no handles. Tilda urges him to listen to the engine under the hood. When he presses his ear to it, he hears strange hissing noises like the creature is under it. When Deaf Mechanic opens the hood, a giant snake slithers out and attacks them. The snake returns back inside the hood, and the car revs to life, chasing the four mechanics. They manage to hide in a corner where the car can't reach them. The boss has no choice but to acknowledge that Tilda is correct. She adds that the monster car is alive and able to shapeshift into other cars at will. The nephew shares there are certain creatures that can mimic rocks or shells to appear like they can be safe places for smaller animals. When their prey surreptitiously hides in them, the creatures then eat the unsuspecting animals. 
The nephew theorizes that maybe the monster car is one of these mimicry creatures, evolving for millions of years until it took on the form of a modern vehicle to prey on humans. Tilda suggests that they call the police, but the boss is determined to end the monster car once and for all. Deaf mechanic and the nephew agree with him too. The nephew comes up with the idea to lure the car into the elevator shaft where they can keep it trapped. The boss and the two go down to the second level of the garage to work on building a car barricade. Meanwhile, Tilda stays behind at level 3 to monitor the monster car's location. She sees the strange substance the car had left behind. She plucks the veteran's necklace out of the puddle, realizing that the car really does kill people. Tilda runs to the phone and calls the secretary to dial the police, but the boss is in the office with the secretary, and he dismisses Tilda's pleas. Tilda tries to find a way out, but she realizes that the doors have all been locked shut by her boss. She protests against her boss, but even the deaf mechanic tells her that the boss is the man in charge. Meanwhile, the nephew manages to trap the car in the lift, but it easily breaks through the barrier and speeds away. At that moment, the secretary hears the noise and investigates. The car finds her and chases after her and her smell. She runs through the garage and hides behind a pillar. Tilda and the others run to rescue the secretary. She walks inside the office, and the car smashes through the wall. It reverses to gain momentum before pulverizing the secretary. Fortunately, Tilda arrives on her motorcycle and grabs the heavy secretary. The car chases after them, as Tilda expertly weaves through the parked vehicles. Deaf mechanic attempts to distract the car. The high-pitched noise it emits disables his hearing aid and momentarily confuses him. The car then starts to go after him. Deaf mechanic runs to the wall, and the car follows him, its two wheels already laid flat against the wall. It successfully runs over Deaf Mechanic and electrocutes the man by bumping into a fused box. This move also kills the lights in the garage. They mourn the loss of one of their crew, but with the electricity off, their chances of survival are quickly dwindling. The boss admits that his key was on his desk, but since the office is now a wreck, it can no longer find it. Meanwhile, Tilda notices once again the strange substance leaking out of the car. She comes to the realization that the monster car is capable of being hurt. They try to go out via the emergency exit, but the boss has also welded that shut. He explains that he had it welded shut to prevent vagrants from breaking in. Tilda gets the idea to kill the car. The boss bristles at the fact that Tilda is taking charge and not him. She rightfully mouths off at him and puts him in his place. In a far corner of the garage, the car repairs its wounds and transforms into a new kind of car. Meanwhile, the crew gets to work. Tilda instructs them to start making a Burmese tiger trap, which is a steel trap with hidden spikes along the bottom. They go to the bottom of the elevator shaft and discover the bearded mechanic's dead body there. After the initial shock, they start hauling the trap there. An alert buzzes, signifying that the monster car is moving closer to their location. Finally, they instruct Maria to create Molotov cocktails, while the others work on the tarp they're using for the trap. The monster car climbs up another level and sees the police car the crew were using earlier. Apparently, it copies the police car and turns into it. They finally finish the trap, and Tilda goes down in her motorcycle to lure the car in the shaft. Moments later, it appears, but it no longer has the appearance of a police car. She successfully lures the car near the shaft. The secretary throws a Molotov cocktail at the car, but the bottle simply bounces off and ricochets back to her. The girl is now on fire, and in her panic, she stumbles backward and falls down the shaft. The boss shouts a warning at her, but it's too late. Still on her motorcycle, Tilda picks up her nephew, and they dodge the monster car, but their motorcycle accidentally crashes, and they run away on foot and ass. They meet up with their boss, who tells them that the secretary did not make it. Tilda's nephew gets inside the police car to move it and comments that he does not have the keys. Tilda realizes too late that he was in the wrong car. The monster car has impersonated the police car to get them inside it. She tries to wrench the nephew out of the vehicle, but his limbs are already being crushed by the giant snake inside. The boss also shoots the car, but the bullets do nothing. Moments later, the car drives away after killing the nephew. Tilda breaks down and cries. She lashes out at the boss for causing all of this, and he awkwardly comforts her in her grief. She then composes herself, and they hot wear a car so they can chase the monster car. They follow the trail of blood the monster car left behind. The two then step out of the car. Out of nowhere, the monster car appears and runs over Tilda. She manages to cling to the front of the car. The boss lures the car to the direction of the shaft. Tilda lets go, but one of its GPS tentacles wrap around her leg, taking her down with it as it falls down the shaft. Tilda avoids the metal spikes but the monster car is impaled in the trap they set up. The boss almost falls from his perch on the ladder, but he also holds on. The monster car finally shows its true form, a humongous black snake-like creature. Tilda grabs the gun and shoots at another car, precariously placed near the opening of the shaft, causing it to tumble down and further impale the monster car into the spikes. Tilda climbs out of the shaft. Aside from a few injuries, she is fine. The boss also survives and hoists himself up the ladder. 
In a brief second, his mind is immediately back to how he can profit from tonight's events. He plans on selling their story and letting Tilda have a piece of the money. He also reveals that he had the keys to the doors all along, but he was just so greedy that he told the others that the key was lost. When the garage doors finally open, they see that Tilda's boyfriend is waiting outside. He's worried about her, since she hasn't been answering his calls. At that moment, she gets fed up with her hormone-rich but spineless boyfriend. She throws him the keys to his car and walks out. The boyfriend sees that his car is completely destroyed. Tilda steps out into the street as dawn breaks over the city. She notices five identical black cars heading toward the garage. As they pass by her, she hears the familiar hum of the monster car. Back inside the garage, the boss happily dials the news station to give them the scoop. The five cars all line up in a straight line in front of him. Their headlights flicker on, implying that these new five cars are all super hybrid creatures similar to the monster car they killed. The movie ends with Tilda continuing to walk away, leaving the boss to his grim fate. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.